On the book, it reads spectacular. It is one of the coolest thing about the novel is that Fremen ride the worms. Now, reading it is cool in one thing, seeing it is something else. It's one of the main reasons Paul's accepted amongst the Fremen, because somebody who wasn't one with Shai Hulud would have died, and Paul doesn't. He rides the worm, literally. First experience on riding the worm. Excellent. Really excellent. I had to define and create the logic and technique and explain to the crew how a Fremen ride on a worm, A, and B, how we will do it. I wanted it to look as real as possible on a structure that will look like the worm. We were trying very hard to kind of go, okay, how big is this thing? Is it the size of a bus? Is it the size of a train? And trying to get that scale and that speed was something that we tried very hard to test. We couldn't spend only a few days getting all the desired shots. We had to spend weeks upon weeks upon weeks finessing every single shot so that it felt like it was being filmed for real. If I had done it by myself, I would still be shooting right now. So we dedicated a unit that was under the supervision of uh, Tanya Lapointe, the, the second unit director. I think we can give it a bit more dust at the beginning and I would ask Christophe if he's comfortable coming back up and we can see how uh, Lawrence recovers. Yeah. We wanted it to be an adrenaline sequence that people would talk about after they've seen the movie. So we knew we'd be doing some research and development to develop the warm movement, the writing technique, technology, how much dust we needed. And so a period of two months we worked on this one scene that lasts a little under three minutes. Stand by. This will be very windy and noisy. The action will be the flag and also the air horn blasting once. Okay, Lawrence, stand by for rehearsal. And three, two, one. We know from the beginning that we need different rigs for different scenes and different action on the worm and on the war movement itself. So we try to plan from the beginning that we have a kind of action rig. Action! And we need to build something where we can do different actions in fast movement. So we, we know we had to build a rig which is kind of vertical, you know. So we built a huge 10 meter by 25 meter warm skin, you know, and put it against the wall on an angle for the, when Paul is jumping off the dune and landing on the warm, which is going down into the sand. See you at the top. We practice it gradually, going up the warm surface higher and higher. So in the beginning, we started lower and uh, just get a feel for it, run through the choreography and then just uh, commit to it. Three, two, one. I was literally hanging off that worm skin, like floating in the air, obviously on wires, of course, to be safe. But yeah, it was a very, very fun day. Yeah, the, well, the gimbal is really interesting because we also had to break that down into three different movements. So one of the movements is a roll and anything that brings Paul to um, close to the sand where he's trying to get away from it needs to course correct the worm. That's a specific position and choreography of the gimbal. What we're working on right now, the gimbal is going from 45 degree to 90 degree where we'll have Paul hanging off of that rig and then falling down. And then our last position is giving us a vertical tilt, which allows us to show when Paul is, is either going at full speed or going up a dune, we'll be able to simulate that movement. And three, two, one, action. We had mortars that would throw out huge amounts of fake sand. The same color that matched the sand in UAE and in Jordan. And this is what created the feeling of the sandworm crashing through a dune. It was very spectacular. You could see it from miles around. And there's one day when one of my special effects colleagues came to me and he said, welcome to the one ton club. We've just crossed the mark of one ton of dust on the film. <laughs> in one day. <laughs> Woo! That was amazing! To an outsider, to somebody not familiar with the source material nor the first movie, it would sound like we're people in Hollywood that all lost our minds. All actors who do sandworm writing on the film went to the Denis Villeneuve Sandworm Writing School because no one was in better position to teach sandworm writing than he was because he grew up with the books 
and therefore he would demonstrate how to ride a sandworm holding the maker hooks, which have lines that are used as reins, and the hands had to be just right. We developed some maker hooks that basically you would extend the maker hooks, you could climb onto the worm. Once you've stabilized yourself on the worm, you can shoot the end of the maker hook out that's on a line 20, 30 feet. They hook under one of the flaps of the worm, and as they pull the worm, it's sensitive to that movement, and then those become your reins. <laughs> the only thing they ask they need on F when we finish the first one is like, if there's a second one, I need to ride a sandworm. And it happened. <laughs> they built this platform that was covered in this worm skin. I don't really know how to explain the texture of it, but it was kind of squishy. <laughs> You'd get on there, like, I was not expecting that personally. There was tons of fans and sand and dusts, and it was very loud. It's like, you know. <laughs> It's easy for us. I just stand there, you know, but uh, it looks really cool. Good. Thank you. I try again to shoot as much as possible, but it will be absolutely unfair to not to talk about the massive input of Paul Lambert. Paul is a magician. I don't think I could ever do a movie without Paul. Working with the Deneen, like, he's very conscious of what works in VFX and what doesn't, which is why it's always a joy to work with him. We're always going to try to do a practical approach to everything and try to make visual effects something which we add to rather than drive. On June 1, we would have the ornithopter inside what we called at the time a dog collar, which was covered in sand colour, and the idea that on a sunny day we would have that light bounce into the ornithopter. So we took that same idea, but we made it much bigger, called it a Colosseum, and we had the gimbal inside that. Three, two, one, one of the go. rules of June is that if you're going to have a shot which is being influenced by the sun, it's going to be shot in the sun. We're not going to try to replicate the sun inside of a studio. You'll never get that intensity. We shot that particular part in Budapest, and then like, we added the aerial photography, which we shot out in the desert around him. But just to get that interactive light on Timothy, we had to do it in that particular way and only shoot it on a sunny day. The scope and scale of Arrakis and the world that Denis building is so large that we need the visual effects to reflect that. And in the case of sandworm writing, the worms are so big that we wouldn't have been able to build it because it's just bigger than the materials available to us. These were hydraulically driven worm surfaces that actors could stand on and pretend to be riding on. We had to seamlessly integrate those with the extended CG worm body. Then marry those foreground elements into background plates, and all of those elements had to come together and look like they were filmed at the same time, on the same day, on the same lighting conditions, to be believable to the audience. If there's a particular shot which comes up and I express that, like, this could be quite tricky to pull off in post, Denis will change the shot. He understands there's a possibility that, like, something isn't going to look real and basically it takes you out of the movie. And that's the one thing which, like, he doesn't want. He doesn't want, you know, to be immersed in this amazing world and then suddenly something comes up on the screen and you don't know quite why <laughs> it doesn't work, but but it doesn't. It looks so real. I mean, it's one of those things that, like, feels so ridiculous, but found a way to capture it and make it feel like a real thing. For the very first time, people experienced how to ride a, a sandworm, so it was a very long process that required a lot of patience, a lot of experiment. It's by far the most complex sequence I ever done. Yeah.